reason that you have come begging for mercy from me. Oh, oh. Hey, I'm Ryan, and welcome to this episode of Creative Sound Lab, the weekly TV show with recording advice, tips, and tons of other stuff. In this episode, I'm going to be teaching you how to create that exact reverb effect. This is actually a tactile effect. It's not something that I pulled out of a, a plug-in, but it's something that I whipped up here at the studio. Nobody else has this effect. This is unique to me. I can mold it, shape it, add elements of my room to it. I can do tons of stuff. And the artists that record with me here has this advantage of a unique sound. And you can do this too. You can create your own effects, your own tactile effects that you know, a lot of the equipment that you already have, guitar amps, uh, rooms, even your family room can become an effect. So today I'm going to be uh, rebuilding this effect. And obviously this is, you know, post-session and I can show you kind of what it sounds like after the fact. But I'm going to be rebuilding, kind of walking you through the steps of what I did to create this effect so you can see exactly how I did it. And like I said, you know, all this stuff is stuff that you may already have with the exception of a reamp box. That is really going to be the one thing you may need to still get. But even at that, a simple $100 item can let you tap into tons of effects that you already have, including all the stomp boxes and pedals and, and things like that that you have that are typically reserved for guitar can now be opened up into vocal reverbs and effects. So let's dive in. Okay, so the very first thing in creating this effect is obviously having microphones on the subject, okay? So um, we're talking about vocalist here, so have a vocalist mic. Go ahead and have the gain settings. Go ahead and check all your, your levels before you set this up. Once you're ready, you're kind of in that, uh, you know, good to record kind of stage. This is when you're adding in this effect. So you're gonna have your levels set and you need to route this signal, this vocal microphone, into a reamp box. You do that through like a DSP mixer that's contained within your sound card or you can do it with your DAW. It really doesn't matter a whole lot even with the slight delay that your DAW would provide um, being that you're you know putting this into a reverb the delay is actually quite common to do like pre-delay for reverb so uh, you could even do it with your DAW but essentially you need to route the vocal microphone into a single output. So I'm actually going to use the Motu DSP mixer. I'm going to take my signal. Let's just pretend that this uh, SCA7 is my vocal microphone. And look at there. It's already routing into uh, 23 and 24. And I can, you know, pan this to one side if I only wanted to do, say, 23 or to the right for 24. But, you know, I really don't care. It's going there. It's, it'll, it'll reach there. And this is essentially creating a headphone mix, but instead we're sending it to a mono guitar amp. Let's take a look at some of these signals and the connections that make it happen. Okay, so here we have uh, basically the quarter inch out of our signal. Now, it doesn't really matter which output that we use for our signal. So, you know, as long as we just plug it into the correct one that we established with our routing. So this would be the headphone signal, a mono headphone signal that we're creating and this goes to the guitar amp. Now, the key thing is, is that this cable is an XLR male connector. So it's quarter inch out, XLR male. This just happens to be what works for me and my sound card. Yours could be different. As long as you're getting the line level out from a headphone uh, mix of just the vocal, the vocal microphone. You don't want anything else but the vocal microphone. Then I'm gonna go ahead and extend this, so it'll be basically a microphone cable here, a female plugging into this, and then a male at the other end in my live room. So I'm just gonna extend this out until it reaches uh, wherever I have the amp set up. Okay, so we're here in the live room. I've extended that XLR cable. XLR cable is carrying line level, the headphone feed of just that vocal mic. That signal comes into here, the input of a reamp box, okay? If you don't have one of these, they're a great investment. This one was like a hundred bucks. You can get them as high as six hundred dollars, seven hundred dollars. You know, for like the NW1 uh, Studio Tool. Um, so there's a range of these, but they give you access to all the junk that you have to use them in 
the environment of your digital audio workstation. So if you don't have one of these, these are super handy. It goes into the input here, then out of the quarter inch jack. This quarter inch signal is still that same vocal microphone, but it's converted into a signal that a guitar amp likes to see. High impedance. Then that signal comes into here. Then from here we have to have a way to record it. So we set up a microphone. I've chosen to use this microphone just because it was kind of the, uh, the last minute decision that I did at the session. Uh, I don't always spend a lot of time choosing what microphones to use. I just kind of have to pick one and run, run with it. So um, because we're going to be comparing these two amps, I figured I'd just use the same microphone. Now, I'm sure a lot of microphones would be better for this kind of application, specifically a ribbon mic for this specific amp, and you'll hear it in a minute. It's a little more high-end, kind of shrill sounding, but with a little bit of subtlety, this could make potentially a very nice element in a mix. So one thing that's unique to this amp is that the uh, spring reverb can be activated without the main signal coming in. So I can just do a wet signal just the spring reverb, which is kind of cool. Uh, I don't know any other amps that can really do this. On the original example that I had playing at the beginning of this episode, it was the, um, the Princeton, um, Princeton reverb, uh, 1965. Incredible, nice spring reverb. Um, it was basically mixed so that it was as much reverb as possible, but you kind of have to give it a little gain on the main uh, gain you know, knob. This amp I can have all the way down and I'll still get a feed into my, my spring reverb, basically letting it be all the wet signal. So let's just check out what this sounds like. Okay, and before I start playing the vocal through this guitar amp and really start to kind of show you these, uh, these results, for, uh, I think they're super cool, okay? But if you have any questions on this, you can always drop me an email at ryan at creativesoundlab.tv. I have available also a um, free PDF download of just a diagram of how to hook all this stuff up, uh, some common uh, ring out boxes you can use, and just some general pointers for this. Uh, this is already available and have been given out already to all my email list uh, subscribers. They already received the link when I um, announced this episode. So if you're a subscriber, make sure you get that download. If you're not a subscriber, uh, you can join. It's just a click away. It's right below the video, and it's like an automatic uh, response. As soon as you hit submit, um, the system automatically sends you that PDF. So you can check that out literally in 10 seconds. So uh, let's go ahead and see what this sounds like. Your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up my soul was bare So now your every touch is with me when I wake And I'm praying that I find a bit of you that I can take And he says, you don't know what you wanted you don't Okay, so I have uh, the effect recorded. I want to go ahead and make sure that I turn uh, off the effect from going into the amp because I don't want to hear what's going on live. I'll go ahead and turn off the microphone as well. And let's have a listen. Fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared So now your every touch Okay, here's the original, the uh, Princeton Reverb. Fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bare So now your every touch is with me when I wake And I'm praying that I find a bit of you that I can take And he says, you don't know yeah, so, you know, it's really cool to hear the difference of, of how different these two effects can be. I really prefer the Princeton Reverb on this. It's just much more lush. Uh, it's uh, more kind of smoky sounding. But yeah. So what I'm actually going to do is add a, a delay. And this is going to kind of simulate pre-delay and all this, but it's also just really the purpose of it 
uh, for, for any reason why you'd use like a pre-delay is just to kind of get your reverb from covering up that vocal. You don't want to mud up the vocal too much. So you can help um, bring the vocal a little bit more forward in the mix. Okay, so let's try 40 milliseconds just to start off with, see what that sounds like. Your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared So now you're every touch Okay, here's without, there's no delay in this your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared Alright, so you can see how it just kind of becomes more of the vocal sound than kind of like something that complements it. Let's really push this a little bit more. Let's take it up to about 80, double that delay time. Your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared So now your every touch is with me when I wake And I'm praying that I find a bit of you that I can take And he says, you don't know what you wanted You don't understand yeah, so you can really hear how um, the the effect is pretty loud, okay? That's that's a lot of reverb, but I can still make out the direct sound of that microphone. So it's a nice it's a nice little trick. Let's push it even further. See how far we can go with this. Uh, this is a really kind of sloshy, messy reverb, so I'm not too worried about the consonants um, and, and attacks of various, frequ um, various syllables uh, poking out to expose how long our reverb actually is. Uh, so let's see how far we can push it. Your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared So, now so yeah, that's even better. You hear even more direct sound. On the word soul, I could hear a little bit of a, a little, you know, kind of slap. That was at 127. Uh, let's keep going and see how far we can take this. Now this is just ridiculous. This is almost 180 milliseconds. But like I said, it's a really sloshy reverb. So you can really make this a part of the, the effect um, of how it interacts with, with that vocal. Your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared so now you're every Yeah, so here it's really becoming a part of uh, almost the rhythm of the song. It's just something to be aware of. So that's definitely one really cool trick you can use for mixing um, when you're using, you know, these kind of homebrew reverbs. Another thing is to try hard panning the effect. So, I mean, in a mix situation, uh, you know, you can uh, spit banjo through the amp if you don't want to do vocal. And then you could, um, you know, counter where the ban banjo is panned to the other side or you know whatever so let's just pretend that our vocalist for some reason uh, maybe it's a background vocalist let's, let's just pretend that and we'll hard pan the reverb to the right the original um, dry vocal to the left I'll go ahead and add in the banjo here <laughs> in my head and before I could cover it up my soul was bared so now your every touch is with me when I wake and I'm praying that I find a bit of you that I can take and he says you don't know what you wanted you don't understand what you need yeah so not that I would necessarily want to do this to my main vocal, but it proves the point that it's just very striking. Um, this is a mono verb and a mono source, and so if you hard pan up, all of a sudden becomes basically, um, you know, somebody sitting over here and the reactants of the room or reverb or whatever over here. So it's a, a really cool way of making a stereo field super wide, and it's not, you know, we're, we're not, not talking about 
um, you know, stereo wideners and phasing tricks and plugins and things like that. We are just hard panning, putting things uh, in in a stereo space. Now this brings me to my, my next point is that this is a mono effect, okay? We haven't been setting up stereo microphones. We haven't been st setting up, uh, you know, two guitar amps with some sort of stereo splitter and all that. No, this has just been a mono effect. So the good news is, is that it's really easy to convert this to a stereo signal. Really all we have to do is just uh, basically what we've been doing today to rebuild the effect is originally we'd start out with um, separating the guitar amp from the vocalist to you know keep the guitar amp out of that vocal mic but then w after the fact we feed that vocal track pre-recorded track into the amp and we basically take the two tracks of the guitar amp and hard pan them and I am for today's uh, experiment with the Gibson Scout I'm gonna double that Gibson Scout because I have it set up I know that's a, that I that each track is identical and you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change the thing between the two tracks they're the same exact uh, setup the only difference is, is in kind of taking down and setting up and rerouting channels I had to basically dip out the feed and then add it back in and so the actual feed might be slightly softer than what it originally was at the beginning of this this video so that may add some interesting effects and help tell these two apart, but I've already recorded this, so let's just see what this sounds like. Your fingertips untangled the knots in my hair And before I could cover it up, my soul was bared So now your every touch is with me when I wake And I'm praying that I Yeah, so even with the exact same setup, same mic, same gain on the preamp, I mean, this stuff just comes out different. It's mainly because it's a tactile effect. No matter what you do, you're going to get a different result, different day, different humidity, different temperature. It's always going to be unique to that moment in time. That's what makes this stuff so cool. And of course, as artists come in to record with you, you're giving them something unique to them. You're not giving them a plugin that was sampled with an IR response, although um, like Altiverb sounds incredible. Um, but this is a unique effect, a tactile effect. And if it's a pedal, it's not going to be so much difference between like if you were to double this, you might have to kind of tweak the settings like just a tick, you know, just a little to one side to help you know, tell these two apart. But this is some really cool stuff here. Now, once again, if you want the downloadable PDF, you know, click that link below this video and you'll get it right away as soon as you join to my mailing list. If you're already a subscriber, you've been already getting these videos every Tuesday and you're already getting those bonuses or downloadable bonuses for each week. So until next Tuesday, have a great time with this. I'll see you soon. These fingertips could once hold down threads of steel But now they're just waiting for the blisters to heal And praying to a God that they've never known before Begging please